Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Andrew Long, and my username is uh, Ohana United. And good morning. My name is Atikun. Uh, my username is Atikun dot S U W. The first three letters of my family name. Uh, so today we are going to talk about uh, WikiJournal. We will give you a quick overview of what WikiJournal is, and then followed by uh, how to pub our publication um, a method to publish uh, peer-reviewed journal articles uh, in different methods. And then we also give a uh, give give an o overview of what happens in the uh, in our current situation and what our future uh, endeavor is. So. Of course, we're going to talk about trying to bridge the uh, academic and the uh, and the Wikimedia uh, community divide. As you know, uh, there is still a little bit of a gap between the two groups. And yeah, how to get involved, including such as yourself, you could be able to publish a peer-reviewed uh, journal article uh, from from this. So, what are we? So we are an open access uh, peer-reviewed journal. Uh, it costs nothing to publish with us. Uh, the readers do not uh, do not need to pay. So it's a diamond slash a, a platinum uh, open access journal. So which is one tier above the gold open access because the gold ones uh, they charge like five. How much do they charge? Depending on the articles, uh, I mean, depending on the journals, I've seen from one thousand U.S. dollars to even seven thousand U.S. dollars, which is ridiculous. Yeah, and if you're coming from a developing a country, you're you're simply not uh, it. The, the amount is just insurmountable when you're trying to publish in a, in an open access journal. However, a lot of the funding agencies nowadays will require you to publish uh, in open access because those are typically government funded, which means that they are coming from like taxpayers, and they and the taxpayers should be able to see those scientific results without being locked behind mm -hmm. paywalls. Yeah, this is problematic in Thailand as well as we are a developing country, um, so we uh, tend to have limited amount of research funding. So when we are required to publish um, in journals as open access, um, it, us it is usually um, the burden of the authors rather than the burden of um, the grant funding institutions. So we kind of found the niche of able to host within Wikiversity. So therefore, the, we don't have to pay for uh, the hosting fee. It's covered by by by, by foundation and uh, and of course, as a uh, just like Wikipedia, we do not charge anyone to to read our contents. So what we found is that we could uh, engage with the uh, with the uh, academic peer review uh, materials. Anyone could, uh, could could work on it online. We have a preprint uh, version. Uh, we have a transparent publishing, which means that, for example, the peer reviews, uh, if, the, if the reviewer choose to be anonymous, but if otherwise the, the reviewer identity is known and their full review, uh, review history and the comments are made public rather than behind closed doors. And mainly is to bridge the Wikimedia and the academic uh, publishing uh, gap. So currently we have a medicine, science, humanities. We're about to launch the next one, which is psychology, psychiatry, and behavioral sciences uh, shortly, uh, hopefully by the end of this year. And we also have the preprint. So uh, their domains are basically what the name implies. Uh, so I won't, I won't spend too much time to, to mention what, what you should them cover. But they're pretty much a very broad range, just like uh, plus one, those are those are those are those those are typically called the mega journals because they publish uh, a lot of the a variety of topics, uh, just like nature or science. They cover all kinds of different uh, different topics and not just focus on say uh, proteins or cell biology <coughs> or or evolution, etc. So why? Uh, what is the purpose of um, doing wiki journals? Um, because it's about reputation, okay? Because the public, um, they have different opinions on, on Wikipedia as a whole. Um, let me figure out how to use the pointer. Anyway, it's not working. <laughs> so the public generally trusts Wikipedia. But when it comes to people in academia like me, uh, we tend to have mixed opinions. Um, first, I think in early 2000, uh, most of the academy, academia, we believe that Wikipedia is not a reliable reference source. So as we 
as time moved on, we realized that um, rather than criticizing whether or not Wikipedia is a reliable source, the only thing we can do is to make it better. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to the second part, the authors, um, when we talk about Wiki, media, uh, Wiki journal, okay, um, that can be very high number of authors, right? And then these authors can come from different fields of um, study. And then the main difference um, of Wiki journal is that the peer review system, rather than having um, pre-publication review by our two or three experts, we also have post-publication peer review and public peer review, which means that people who, can, who come across the article online, anyone who come across the article online, can have their say on the article before, during, or even after the uh, publication yeah. process. Yeah. yeah, basically they're utilizing the talk page if they notice there's any issues, for example, references, mm. if they notice that something seems odd, or if they identify that, for example, oh, this paper was actually published elsewhere already, and uh, so it's some, someone might be trying to publish it, uh, using the same paper to publish in multiple, in, in multiple journals, and so they could, they could flag those out, rather than just having like one, uh, like two or three pairs of eyes, you have a lot more people that are looking into, into them. Yeah, and it's also constantly updated. So from my experience, uh, a few weeks ago, I published one article, and then I, I found out that I made a typo on the article, but there's no way to correct it, apart from, having, uh, apart from writing a correction paper, which be attached to that paper afterward, uh, which is not ideal, but having the uh, possibility of updating it afterward, uh, it's a big plus, in my opinion. And maybe you want to expand on the readership size? Yeah, sure. Okay. Yep. So as we know, Wikipedia, it's, uh, it, it has broad reach across the world. But comparing to, uh, for, for example, journals, we often joke that like, when you write your thesis, there's only maybe five other people in the world that will ever read it in, in your entire lifetime because other people don't, simply don't read it. Uh, so we know that Wikipedia, it's wide ranging the public from, uh, from doctors to, uh, to lawmakers. We have seen, for example, we have heard stories of lawmakers ca caught plagiarizing, uh, pla pla plagiarizing Wikipedia pages. Those often get onto the news. We have journalists who are trying to uh, gather information uh, or doing like background information from obtaining from Wikipedia. And of course we have students. But uh, we are, we're trying to get a high quality and accurate information in, in the top of our publishing. And what we found is that in the traditional academic uh, journals, as we said, uh, they usually have to, the money has to come from somewhere. So either the reader have to pay for it or in the terms, forms of like individual, uh, individual readers or the library where the affiliation or the university pays for it. Uh, if it's open access, then it will be the offer that's a visit. But that becomes an issue with uh, predatory open access journals. They charge for they charge the, the offers for money without doing much, if at all, any kind of peer review. Uh, and of course, uh, reputation, the big names like Science or Nature, those are like household names. Uh, but we also have some that are like uh, that you have never heard of. But are they are they reliable? Uh, so are they or are they questionable? There's always kind of like a, de a debate over wh whether uh, whether a journal is considered to be reliable or not. Uh, the authors tend to be more of like uh, are experts in the domain, but that also precludes a lot of independent uh, scholars or researchers that are not affiliated with a particular university. They might be with hospitals and such, and they would not be able to contribute. Uh, and peer review, it's only typically read by the uh, by the editor or and, and maybe a, a few more uh, t uh, a few more peer reviewers, and that's it. And like uh, like what Afikan said, once the paper is published, it's static. It's frozen. It's kind of like a tombstone. You cannot change it. So uh, we already kind of uh, we kind of already mentioned that. So. Uh, for developed countries, they might have uh, they might have waivers or uh, or a reduction in publication costs, but nonetheless, a lot of those are still are still cost prohibitive. 
So we kind of we, we kind of draw in, par, uh, in comparison between what Wikipedia is and also what we Wikijournal could deliver a solution to this problem by by eliminating a lot of the a lot of the costs while tapping into a lot of the existing mechanisms like talk pages and also reviews uh, to to adapt and be able to publish as a as a journal article. Uh, but kind of like what uh, what this morning's uh, speech is about, we are we still have a little bit of a technical uh, uh, innovations that we need to fully adapt to that because Wikipedia is not meant like as it stands right now, the software is not meant to be for like supporting journal publications. Simple things as simple as like trying to convert from a wiki page into a PDF form, uh, into like a in a PDF file. That is very uh, difficult, uh, but. This is something that hopefully could be solved down the road and that will also simplify our publication process after the paper has been accepted. Uh, so Wikijournal, on the other hand, it's open access. Anyone could contribute. Uh, if there's an update that is required, we will simply, uh, we will have to uh, send it for peer review, but we can mint a D new DOI and then the, the page will, will update on the, on the existing page. So you get a, you get a new and updated uh, article uh, one of the one of the recent example is the, we have recently published a paper on the history of Corona forest. Obviously, if it was published four or five years ago, uh, it wouldn't have covered COVID. So it would just talk about like coronavirus and dogs or or or, or mouse. It wouldn't talk about humans. Uh, but uh, but if if that were to be published, then we could simply amend that and add a, add, add in a new section that talks about the global pandemic. And public peer review is very important because we could demonstrate that the reviewers have read the work and what kind of critiques they made. And subsequently, because of the history, we know precisely how the authors have addressed those comments through the, through, through the changes comparing to the edits. Yeah. Oh, here, here are some different, uh, two different ways you can contribute to uh, Wiki journals, um, you can conduct your own research, right? That's uh, independent material. Uh, you perform an experiment, you have carried out all the stuff needed for publication, then you write your manuscript and then you publish it on, not, not publish it, but submit it to, uh, to the wiki journal page. Or you can have uh, some Wikipedia articles and submit it to wiki journal. So there are two possibilities of how you uh, contribute as an author, okay? And then after you have submitted um, your manuscript, the, uh, it will be received by our editors, and our editors will um, try to find appropriate um, reviewers for that particular manuscript, but sometimes we do have difficulties in finding reviewers, right? Yes. Um, there was an instance where we have invited 70 reviewers and no reply. Yeah, and then that's recent, right? Right? Yeah, uh, it's uh, it's getting more it's getting more frustrated, especially af uh, after the pandemic. Uh, we often send out like reviews upon reviews. It's not just us; we have heard that from other journals as well. Uh, the it just becomes swamp, and if you're trying to do uh, like a hot topic like AI or climate change, you might be sending a hundred or two hundred, and then you might only get one or two that said they would review. And then a month later, when you chase them down and see like, hey, have you completed a review? They may say, I need more time, or they simply just ignore you, and then you have to go back to scratch, and, and you have to keep on send, sending more uh, requests to, to those people. And when, after the peer review is done, uh, and not, not only the uh, peer reviewers that have a chance to have that say on the article, people in the public also are also able to comment on the article. And then this process, the peer review process, and then back and forth forward between uh, the peer reviewers and the authors. Um, usually, it's how many rounds are there? One or two rounds, right? It, it, yeah, it depends whether the, the, the reviewers think that like it has uh, they, the the offers have yeah. sufficiently addressed the comments. If they if they rebut or they disagree mm -hmm. on something, then it, it might go on a few few more rounds. Yeah. Yeah, and if the changes are satisfactory, then the article can be accepted for publication. And normally the process um, from submission to publication, it takes around, I don't know, maybe four months? Maybe? Yeah, it takes, it takes about that. It also depends on the discipline. 
mm. uh, when it comes to humanities where uh, we are aware uh, where it is much the, the views are much more much more niche it's even harder to find say uh, a peer reviewer for an uh, English uh, uh, English historical events from the 1400s those the, the field is super narrow and you there might be only like five or six experts in the entire world and if four of them turned it down then what are you going to do right so so that that's so that's one of the limitation that we have but the quick quiz that we have was around one and a half months right that was the yeah. quickest yeah the quickest is like one and a half so it's it's very lightning quick and what what's interesting is that not only do the uh, do do the the, the 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 offer gets like a citable copy that they could include on the CV resume uh, for the academic work, the changes also get brought back into Wikipedia so that Wikipedia also benefits from having this expert subject matter uh, subject matter expert two of them at least having review on that content, and one of our the best example we have is uh, is the article on surface tension. Uh, it was uh, labeled as a good article, which means that it has gone through Wikipedia community review, at least one person, and it was assigned with a good article status on English Wikipedia. When we sent it out uh, to the peer reviewers, both of them slammed it hard and they said some of the theories were outdated and, we, uh, and they, they recommended to reject the article, which we did. And we, we posted that, uh, that commentary back onto the talk page of that article and subsequently it got delisted from from the good article because of those comments so we are not only just submitting good contents to improve wikipedia but we are able to also identify some of the problematic ones through the peer review process and ha and, and 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 see meaningful changes on wikipedia yeah, next slide. yeah you have to click one more i think So what we have is kind of like a dual, uh, dual contribution pathways is we could have uh, independent uh, uh, scholars with, with, a, with a living version, large visibility. So there, so there is a guarantee that like people will be reading it. Uh, and, and for wiki journals, it also helps uh, build the reputation uh, because uh, one of the struggles for a, a journal at the beginning is simply just publishing the number, uh, the amount of uh, articles. When we apply for Scopus uh, to, for, for having to be indexed, one of the pushback that we received was that you guys are not, uh, you guys are doing great, but you guys are not publishing enough articles for the last two years. Uh, could you, uh, please come back and apply when you get sub, sub, like X number of articles, I forgot what the number they were asking for, within, within a year and, and over the two years so that you could, so that, uh, and then try reapply again. So and it uh, so so that is one of the way where we could we could bump up the the publication uh, numbers while without sacrificing the quality of those articles. Yep, I think I kind of covered that. Yeah. So a uh, peer review. Uh, anybody in the room if uh, could also contribute uh, on the on the peer review as a as a public if you know in your in your domain whether you're a librarian or where you're a scholar or whether you're in engineering or an artist you could you could also mention that like hey i noticed that this article which i know of uh something looks off or the referencing seems to be wrong just like what we have with, with our with our game uh so 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 we have we have received feedbacks that uh that that, that uh and, and and the authors took upon it and and updated it and our, uh, when, when it comes to the peer reviewers, we give them options of either choose to be anonymous or, uh, or have the identity uh, made open. What we found is that over time, uh, from 2013, we have about like 30% uh, <coughs> uh, 30, 30 of the reviewers saying that, yep, you could include my name uh, my, uh, along with the, with the peer review. But you can see that over time, it has increased steadily to pass like 80%, meaning that people do uh, pe people do stand behind the work, and having the identity, uh, having the public peer review open, 
It also clamps down on uh, some of the harassment issues that we have or sexist comments uh, because I, I know, for example, uh, I, have a, I know a friend who's like female engineer uh, in a university and, they, and she would sometimes get sexist remarks for commenting to how engineers, engineer, like f women should not be engineers. But when we have public peer review and we made that known clear in advance, then it also removes some of the some some of those safety issues or 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 uh, or, or inappropriate comments because they know that it's going to show up even if they choose to choose to be anonymous in their in their reviews. But we do offer that in case there are some very critical comments that they want to attach, but they don't want to they don't want to damage their their, uh, their reputation. So we do offer that. But as you can see from the graph, it is trending up. Yep, and one of the things that we want is uh, uh, we want you to uh, to help our journal grow. Uh, one of the way is to join the editorial board. Uh, we uh, medicine, science, and humanity, especially for humanities and science, because those fields are so broad. When you're science, you're looking anything from like proteins to climate change to uh, computer science to minerals, astronomy. Uh, so we need a, we need a large contingency. Same similarly for humanities. Uh, humanities cover a wide area, a area, and a lot of the editor in chiefs are more of like science uh, or like scientists trained. So we, uh, so we need more help with the humanities side to help the, the journals grow. And also today we are fortunate to have Netha, mm -hmm. yeah, who is also serving as editor of Wiki Channel of Medicine. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, kind of, we uh, so we'll quickly talk about what our current and future developments for for Wiki Journals. So right now we have a pro, uh, so Wiki Journal of Medicine because it's established a, a few years ahead of the other journals. So it has published about 50, uh, 50 plus articles. Science it has ju published just over 30. Uh, we have crossed that mark uh, <laughs> with, with two articles published in the last month. Uh, humanities, we understand that it, uh, it is a little bit more difficult topic and I think everyone is aware that there are content gaps within, in, in the humanities area and this is very reflective of the, of the similar public publishing counts in, uh, in our field as well. Uh, but one of the very interesting things that we found is that uh, we do get quite a bit of, we do get quite a bit of views from, uh, from other journal articles that are published uh, in both science and medicine. Humanities, because of the way that, uh, uh, they, they are referenced, so, so it tends to get a little bit less uh, a reader from other peer-reviewed journal articles. And one interesting fact is that it's actually, uh, when, we, when it comes to citations, we found that it's actually not so much journal articles, but they're actually image galleries. So for example, we, uh, we have published image, gal uh, image galleries, for example, uh, someone identify a set of, say, uh, the the anatomy of, of, of a heart, and they would they, and then they would uh, pub, they would find comments, art, uh, images, illustrations that show like the, how how a heart works, and then we would actually publish that as kind of like an article, but it's like an art images within an article, and those actually get uh, the highest number of citations more than even of our like our top five. I think four of them are like image galleries. So that is a very interesting when, when you look at like 50 plus articles, the top five in, in medicine, four of them are, are, are images. So there is like a really big need for open access images uh, uh, that, that we found. Yeah, I, 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 I kind of said that. Uh, yeah. yeah, a picture speaks a thousand words, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we are fully integrated uh, with Wikidata. So, for example, the offers, they are all linked, uh, the, 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 apps, the, the keywords, and uh, like the review process, the date, submission dates, acceptance, or, de or the decline dates, those are, all, those are all fully integrated onto Wikidata. So, you could do a query, you could do, uh, and try to see, like, I want to find articles published before, uh, before this year, and, the, and it has more than two peer reviewers. So, you could, uh, you could certainly do that. Yep, so good news is uh, recently, uh, I think last year, uh, Wiki Journal of Medicine is indexed in Scopus. Yeah, and since we first indexed in Scopus, I think we started to have more submissions, right? Yeah. This is very important from the author's pers perspective because when the authors are looking for a journal to publish, 
and they, they always look for journals that are indexed in Web of Science, PubMed, and Scopus, all these reputable databases because when it comes to their career advancement, the articles that get evaluated for them to get promoted um, would have to be from journals or, or publishers that are reputable and mm -hmm. Scopus is one of them. So that's how I think we um, were able to gain more submissions by being indexed in one of these indexes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that is kind of like what our what one of our main goal is. And we also have another goal, which is that we actually worked on, uh, we work on a request for uh, for proposal to, for WikiJournal to become the, the next sister project. So the, so the vote has already taken place on Meta since uh, 2019. Uh, it was actually supposed to go into the in, it go into the next phase, uh, which is presenting to the board. Uh, however, that kind of uh, stopped because of COVID, and uh, so we're trying to re kickstart the, the process. So you can see that uh, overwhelming majority of the of, of the Wikipedia, uh, Wikimedia community is in support of the of of WikiJournal and wants to see that grow as like as the next sister project. So on the on the equal footing as say like uh, Wikisource, Wikiquotes, uh, Commons, Wikidata. Or even Wikipedia, who knows? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, we, we, do, we want to increase our contributor, uh, contributors. Uh, we want to expand into the university curriculums uh, by, by, promoting, like, by promoting the journals and also like, uh, the, the awareness of our journals. Uh, we want to partner with, uh, with specialized uh, journals that uh, some of the journals, they are actually like, com like a computational biology. They actually want uh, the authors to also create like a wiki copy of their of, of the published papers. So we could work with that to have a, like a dual uh, publication simultaneously to benefit for the, both the readers as well as the scientists uh, themselves. And yeah, we like I said, we're expanding into other uh, other disciplines like uh, psychology. So so who knows? We might be we, we could be expanding into into other areas like music, law, business, etc. Yep, and yeah, so, uh, go back, please. Sorry. Yeah, so yeah, specialized extension. So as we kind of talked about this morning, uh, there are still some technical uh, technical gaps that we need to address, like trying to find like how often does that article get cited? It takes a lot of, a lot of time converting from a septic article from a word document into like a PDF. Those take a lot of time, and also because we pay our contractors, so it also eats up a substantial amount of our funding. For, to perform these uh, r repetitive and something that could actually be like an uh, automated task. And that is something that we, we, hope, we hope to re re resolve this issue in the, in the near future. Yeah, so yeah, take home message. Uh, I think, yeah, next slide, I think it has, yeah. So the take home message is we're kind of like blending in the Wikipedia and the publishing, academic publishing uh, platform. And we, there is a, definitely a large, uh, we identify that as a large capacity for growth. Uh, as, like, as I said, the, the galleries are definitely a source for, for expansion. Uh, there are many ways to contribute uh, for everyone in the room. Uh, we are especially looking for like librarians or lecturers, professors to join us with the editorial board to, uh, to, to help us grow, in, the, grow in, in different areas. And yeah, and yeah. So uh, here are the, the, free, the, the free links, uh, as I mentioned, because we're hosted on, on Wikiversity. So these are just like uh, redirects back onto the, uh, these websites are redirect links back to the Wikiversity pages for the, for the free journals. And we'll be happy to take some questions. Right on time. All right, uh, thank you for the presentation. I have uh, two questions. The first one, when you say you're hosted on Wikiversity, you're meaning Wikiversity in English. So I think one element of what I see here as an ecosystem is that this could lead to uh, not having uh, this whole project stayed uh, in English because I think including the economic barrier that you have described, you have a language barrier on how science is shared. So I wanted to understand more what are the the steps or the next steps around uh, uh, multilingualism. Another question that I have is uh, around impact factor. Uh, 
Yes. So you've mentioned the number of views, uh, which is one element, one criterion that we are, of course, interested in. But how does it relate to the how the science, so how science uh, deals with how good science is made, which is basically understanding the factoring H5 and everything that is uh, involved with. Thank you. I could, I could take the first half and then Akifan could expand on to the second question. So um, I actually skipped through this because I, I, I was looking at the time and realized that I, I was over by, by a little bit. Oh, we're good? Okay. Yeah. So we actually have published in other languages. So uh, we have one researcher that, who's a Nepalese. So, uh, so he, uh, once the article is published and accepted uh, the, as the English version, the researcher translated into Nepalese and published it as well in Nepalese language. So, uh, so, so that is one way where we have and successfully published in non-English. Uh, two years ago, we were actually working with the with Ukraine uh, to try to publish like a special issue for Ukrainian scientists. Uh, but of course, as the war started, so we had to put that, we had to suspend that initiative because a lot of their research capacity and facilities were bombed by, by the war. So we have to put, unfortunately, we have to put that on hold, but we already have plans and we have published something uh, in non-English. And we understand that this is one big venue for expansion because not all, not, English is only like a minority language when you look across the world. There are a lot of other languages, French, Spanish, uh, uh, Cyrillic, Chinese, those, are, th those languages cover a lot more audience than just English, right? So uh, Wikipedia already has the platform for this and it is very easy for us to publish the article in, in more than one language uh, as long as the author himself or herself it's capable of doing the translation work and it uh, has proficiency in that language. Does that answer your question? Yeah. And um, to add further a bit on, on what Andrew just pointed out, I think um, publishing in English is just merely the reflection of academia in general because when you look at all publishers like Springer, Elsevier, all these publishers, they only have articles. I mean, I think I think most of them only publish articles in English. So um, that would be the reflection of that. Um, going to your second question regarding um, impact factor, um, to to be able to have an impact factor, you would need to be indexed in Web of Science, and and I I think the criteria to be indexed in Web of Science, it's much harder than that of Scopus and PubMed, right? So you would need more submissions. You would need um, higher quality of submissions, and then, yeah, and, and this has to be continued, um, not just in one or two years, but in, um, longer than that. And if, let's say, if you are indexed in Web of Science, um, I think it would take two years um, to, be, to, to have the first impact factor, because um, when the way impact factor is calculated, um, it's number of citations, right? And divided by number of articles. So when um, you're looking at citations, um, it, will it will be calculated from um, number of citations in the, last two in the last two years and then divided by number of submissions in the minus two years, right? So it's, you have to wait two or three years for that to happen. And the citations that, that, were, that were calculated in the impact factor um, only counts citations from the journals that are indexed in Web of Science. So that's even harder to have high impact factor. Yeah. It's very easy for uh, existing journals like Nature to spin off or create like a subsection like Nature has different topic, Nature Climate Change, Nature Communications, Nature like Nanobiology, uh, those kind of stuff. And because they have their already have an existing reputation, it's very easy to draw submissions because of their name. Uh, so yes, they, they just they just basically have the time is the only factor that they have to wait it out. It's kind of like a prison sentence. They have to they have to sit out for two years before they get an impact factor. For us, because we're kind of starting from scratch, 
we have to we have more like work to do and it becomes a chicken and egg problem you people don't want to submit because it's not indexed well so you have less numbers being published that click that excludes you from being to apply to be indexed so as a result the scientists will choose to publish elsewhere so so it's kind of it's really complicated it's there's no no good solution to, to solve this problem uh, uh, on top of the two years, of course. Yeah. One thing that's happening is um, most journals don't want narrative reviews of the literature. They want systematic reviews. Most uh, graduate students do not cannot do systematic reviews because, but they have to do a narrative review for their dissertations. So it seemed to me that that would be a great population because they will have their main article published in whatever journal, but to publish their narrative review of the literature because used to, journals used to accept that. Nowadays they don't. Uh, it's very difficult that a journal will accept the narrative review of the literature. So perhaps that's the public that needs to be informed about this option. Professors in graduate programs to encourage students to publish their narrative literature reviews. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that most definitely. We find that uh, like we a lot of our source contents are like encyclopedic review articles, which means that. An existing copy already exists on Wikipedia uh, in some form, whether it's like a short stub or, uh, or it's a feature article. We get, we, we get all kinds of uh, articles from different variety of quality. And what we, what we often do is we get it expanded uh, so, so that the review article could get published. But uh, more importantly, uh, we also have uh, like narratives. It's, not just not just narratives, but also like how the how the evolution of that view has transformed over the years, like like a history or like a chronology, something that journals don't only publish the latest, flashiest, biggest announcements, uh, but they kind of neglected a lot of the a, a lot of the things that were taken along the pathway. Do you have anything? To add? Yeah, I, I think one way to um, encourage high quality. Um, review articles would be invited contribution. We have never done that. Or maybe we could um, invite big names in the field, uh, inviting them to write an article and say on top of their paper, invited contribution, things like that. I, I think it, it would help because at uh, what the one of the audience said, um, it's difficult nowadays to publish narrative reviews because um, most uh, Highly impact journals, they, they always look for systematic reviews because at the end, this would give them um, more citations and that would lead to a um, higher impact factor. So, so, so um, yeah. Okay, so if we have no more questions, I would really like to thank uh, Andrew and Atikan for such a wonderful presentation and session. It was very enlightening. Thank you very much. Um, we will have a one hour and a half break. Uh, we will have lunch, so we can just go to restaurant and have a little break. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Thank you very much.